RDNA is dead. Long live UDNA. Hey, what's cracking everybody? Welcome back to Computer Games Hardware. Today on the channel, we are talking about the sun setting of RDNA, AMD's GPU processing architecture that has served us over many, many years. But we're also looking forward to UDNA, and we've got some uh, juicy morsels and rumors to get through as well. So we're bringing back Card Wars. Welcome back to the fifth episode of Card Wars. Card Wars is the uh, GPU segment here at Computer Games Hardware. Uh, it's been kind of quiet lately because we haven't had much stuff to go on, but everything's starting to trickle out. It's just been like, it must be Christmas because all these like tiny bits and pieces have been just trickling through. AMD is said to be sunsetting the RDNA branding for its uh, GPU series of uh, graphics card because they are unifying their GPU stack with their new architecture and they're going to be calling it UDNA, which to me is a bit uninspiring because you know you could get behind RDNA because it's Radeon DNA, um, but what they seem to be doing is calling it UDNA, which stands for unified because what they're attempting to do is uh, unify their gaming GPU segments with their server segments and calling it UDNA. So that's a little bit uninspiring to me. I would have kept the RDNA branding and just unified the stack anyway, call it RDNA U or, you know, URDNA, I don't know. But uh, UDNA doesn't sound too inspiring to me. It doesn't have the uh, that old Radeon blood to it, that, uh, you know, Team Red inspired branding to it, which I think is a bit of a loss, but AMD seem to like it, so there you go. So it looks like we shouldn't expect UDNA any sooner than the second quarter of 2026. And this comes from our old mate, Zheng Zong Gao. Uh, and sorry if I'm butchering that again, mate, but you might remember this guy. He's the guy that's uh, from Chip Hell and his uh, photo is uh, Jensen's head on the bronze body. And he was the leaker that um, gave us the juicy details about the release of uh, the 9800 X3D and all the leaks and rumors surrounding that and he's been pretty spot on before so uh, that's part of the reason why we're talking this today this comes from a post from him from Chip Hell and uh, he's broken down some juicy details about the new UDNA architecture so what he has said is there's going to be no RDNA 5 or a successor to CDNA which is AMD's data center to GPU architecture. So that's obviously where the unification comes in because they're obviously building this architecture with both the data center and gaming in mind. And it does make a bit of sense to me. It's surprising to me that it's coming so soon. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they implement this new unified architecture because obviously the uh, needs for the data center and the needs for gaming are a little bit different. But the reason they're probably doing it is because of the uh, needs of uh, AI acceleration, uh, ray tracing, all those things. Virtual reality holds a key to the evolution of the human mind. They've probably identified that uh, what they have in the gaming segment they can use in the data section, uh, in the data center in other ways. So streamlining that process and making it more cost effective might mean good news for us. I'm not sure that it always translates to, uh, you know, the uh, consumer uh, bottom dollar, but we will see. That's probably the reason they're doing it, make it a little bit cheaper. They've probably identified that they have to develop some new hardware and uh, you know, new gear, implement uh, new versions of AI acceleration that are going to push forward, uh, not just the data center, but will also be really useful for gaming. So that's that's pretty exciting and it's coming you know relatively sooner than you think so we're at the end of 2024 now q2 2026 doesn't seem that far away 
Hey, just want to jump in here and say if you're enjoying any of the content on Computer Games Hardware, please check us a like, share, and subscribe. And uh, watching the videos really helps us out, guys. We also have some affiliate links in the description below, so you can check those out. And join us on our socials. We've got uh, TikTok, we've got Threads, we've got Instagram. Uh, we've also even got uh, Blue Sky, so I will chuck in the link in this video as well. So. Thanks very much for watching guys, I appreciate you all. All right, so let's take a look at what the rumors say. There is no longer going to be an RDNA code name. It will be UDNA and the MI400 and the RX9000 will both use UDNA. Uh, it will be an ALU design similar to GCN. So uh, GCN was uh, Vega and uh, the ALU design is like uh, uh, the uh, core logic processing. So it seems like that they're actually simplifying the design, which which might make sense for them to uh, accommodate uh, AI acceleration, tensor cores and things like that, which have all been uh, rumors swirling around as well. They're also saying, as we mentioned before, that uh, the UDNA gaming GPUs are set for mass production in Q2 2026. So that's not a very long time to wait. We will be getting a RX 9000 or something similar in the UDNA uh, architecture. So that is quite exciting. So that's what I think AMD are doing. I think this uh, slow period and not competing in the high end has been for the benefit and the development of UDNA. So it probably sucks in the uh, uh, in the short term, but hopefully that means that we're gonna get some uh, great yields, great high performing GPUs, better ray tracing, better AI acceleration, all those sort of things, because that's where you want it. You want it in your GPUs, because that's what they're designed for. So it will be interesting to see how the development uh, comes through. There is also another little tiny rumor that uh, has been announced here, and that is that the PlayStation 6 will be using the UDNA architecture for its graphics processing. And this one I'm gonna take with a little bit of a grain of salt. It says that they're still not sure uh, if it will be using uh, RDNA for its uh, APU and things like that. So I am highly doubtful of this. Remembering, you know, the current PlayStation 5 Pro is still using uh, old RDNA 2 architecture. So uh, for, for the PlayStation 6 in 2026 to be uh, running that, and that's not to say PlayStation 6 will be releasing in 2026, but for it to have the latest and greatest cutting edge technology GPU inside of it would be quite an expensive process. So I'm not gonna hold my breath for that. It would be amazing. Maybe if they're looking at 2028, 2030 uh, and give it a couple of years to mature, maybe. But it seems like a bit of a reach when we haven't even crossed uh, uh, you know, into RDNA 3 yet. So uh, I think that the uh, PlayStation and the console and for uh, price to performance, that they're probably not thinking about that at this stage yet. Um, it would be crazy if they did, and I think we would be entering into a uh, another PS3 console era where we're playing, you know, where you're paying a thousand bucks plus, uh, which would be absolutely crazy. But hey, who knows with the uh with the PS5 Pro being how much it costs now and all the issues that, that it's having, um, <laughs> who knows? Maybe they're setting us up for a big price hike. But that's what the rumor says, that uh, the PlayStation 6 will feature UDNA. I'm not buying that one, but we will wait and see. By the way, there's also rumors of a new Sony handheld that will be using AMD uh, hardware as well. So. Uh, Keep it locked in on computer games hardware to find out more about that. Can't believe we're talking about all this stuff and they haven't even announced a Nintendo Switch 2 yet. So put that into perspective, take all of this with a grain of salt. <laughs> we still haven't even got the announcement of the Switch 2 yet. So uh, this is all great stuff to talk about, but just keep your expectations 
nice and tempered because you know a lot of things can change between now and 2026. There's also a little bit of a rumor here that Microsoft's handheld will be uh, using Qualcomm for its uh, handheld hardware, um, but that is some uh, supply chain news and they're not too sure about the performance. So there you go as well. Again, grain of salt guys, this can all change fairly quickly. So what do you guys think? I'm pretty interested. That is some uh, really exciting news to uh, get us through the Christmas period right into Computex. So we haven't got too long to go until uh, a lot of the new GPU news is revealed to us, but I'm actually looking forward to uDNA. So this sounds really exciting. And what's good about it is, uh, uh, you know, it's not just uh, leaks and Rumors AMD have spoken at length about their unifying process and uh, wanting to, uh, uh, you know, uh, jump into market share for the data center and all that sort of stuff. So uh, the UDNA rumors are based in uh, reality that uh, AMD is presenting. So let's talk about some of the main details, right? So the first and the main thing is this unified design. And what AMD are trying to do uh, is taking the graphics intent intensive processes from RDNA and uh, merging them with the compute heavy task units for cDNA to uh, streamline that data process to make a uh, more powerful and faster uh, architecture. And what they're trying to do is also improve forward and backward compatibility. So makes sense to me. So the, the next big thing is the AI acceleration. So uh, unlike RDNA, UDNA is said to feature dedicated tensor cores, which will obviously help in a wide range of functions. Uh, most notably, it will uh, support ray tracing and AI hardware acceleration. So uh, that will be a uh, big jump for the uh, consumer gaming graphics process because uh, cDNA already has some of those features in them. So by merging them or unifying them, uh, what we'll be doing is we will be getting that uh, competitive edge from cDNA and injecting that into rDNA. Uh, so that will be a big boost for like modern like machine learning applications and all that sort of stuff and for gaming with the, the you know, uh, accelerated ray tracing, frame generation, uh, FSR, and all those kinds of things. I know it's going to be a really data center centric architecture because what they want to do is compete with uh, NVIDIA in those segments, which they've really struggled to do. So NVIDIA have taken off with that. So I think this is AMD's opportunity to catch up and try to excel in this space. And I think that brings us to the last sector. It's the market share that they're trying to uh, increase. And what they're doing is essentially copying NVIDIA. You'll notice when we talk about Blackwell, it's uh, had some issues and stuff like that, but that is a singular architecture that goes into uh, the data center. There is the gaming segment for the GeForce for uh, NVIDIA. It is a unified architecture that they use. So the uh, tensor cores that they uh, use in the data center for all that hardware acceleration is used elsewhere for uh, frame generation, for uh, the, you know, they're the tensor cores. So they use them for ray tracing and all that crazy thing, which is why NVIDIA has been on the bleeding edge because they've been thinking holistically about their uh, GPU architecture. So AMD are taking a leaf out of NVIDIA's book and they are going to be trying to attempt to unify this GPU architecture and use all the power that they can get from their GPU data center and inject it into their gaming segments. So, and you know, make the process a lot more cheaper uh, along the way as well. So hopefully this means that we're going to start to see some innovation in the GPU segment and that there's going to be some um, pretty heavy competition. That's what I hope. I think they're pretty serious about this. 
We've spoken before about these companies no longer being gaming companies anymore. So I think this is more evidence of that. RDNA is dead. They're getting rid of the Radeon. They don't want to be known as this gaming company anymore. They want to be taken seriously and play with the big boys like Nvidia, like Jensen, and uh, really be taken seriously as a AI uh, a conglomerate and that, you know, that does gaming as well. So that's where I think we're heading, but I think it will yield some results for gamers. So fear not, there's gonna be plenty of leaks and rumors and things to come out of this. So I'm excited for this. What does that mean for you guys? Are you gonna hold off on uh, buying a new GPU if you need one? Are you waiting to hear what uh, Blackwell's doing and the introduction of the 50 series? Hey, maybe you're waiting for Battle Mage. Some leaks and rumors are coming through about Battle Mage and Intel Arc as well. So there's a lot going on. But does this mean we hold off? If you're you're like me, you're probably going to need uh, a little bit more information till you run out and buy a GPU. That's why we uh, spent our last video cleaning out the old uh, 6800 XT to give it a bit more life so we can uh, hear about what's coming up in the GPU segment in 2025. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I've had a really good time making this. I hope you've had a good time watching it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. See you next time.